let's talk just briefly about the man we see right at the beginning of the clip. Yeah. That's Hank Williams' grandson, Shelton, otherwise known as Hank III, yeah. who looks eerily like his grandfather, where Hank Jr., the actual son, he looks like he just some some guy, no real yeah. res facially, no resemblance to Hank Williams seemingly at all. Yeah, and I mean that was one of those challenges. And Hank three does look exactly like his grandfather, and <clears throat> he was nice enough to spend a lot of time with me. I mean, we went and I found letters and that Hank had written and had him read them and listen to old records, and you know we spent a lot of time with him just trying to kind of capture that feeling of Hank because we didn't have any material to work with, you know, it was kind of the challenge of it. He, but we had these incredible interviews. I mean, I felt like I spent months driving around the South interviewing Drifting Cowboys. That was the name of Hank's band, you know, and the, ultimately there were probably, you know, 50 members of the Drifting Cowboys over the years. And I interviewed everyone that was alive, maybe 28 of them or something. And it was an incredible experience. I mean, it felt like, you know, anthropology. I mean, it was really journalism. Like I said, it was going around and just doing the legwork of trying to figure out who this guy was. And then later standing back and saying, okay, what's this? What's the story? I mean, the, the other thing I was talking about earlier that I did with this film, I think it was the first film I did it on, and I've done it on every music doc since, is that Hank's songwriting was so autobiographical that you could really get a sense of his story from what he was saying. If you wanted to know Hank best, a lot of people told me, listen to his music. And so I would actually, I put together a soundtrack before I ever made the film. You know, I just spent a lot of time listening to the songs and figuring out how the songs told the story so that it helped me keep track of how I wanted to, to organize the film. And, you know, the ultimate soundtrack changed a little bit, but generally the structure of it remained. You know, the, the idea that the music helps tell the story. The music isn't there as adornment or as filler. The music itself is the story. And so I worked very hard to make sure that the music, particularly with Hank, really helped tell his story. Yeah, it, it, it seemed like it would be a very heavy lift. Nine minutes of, of moving film and some photos and a whole lot of music. But to dig these people up, I mean, some of those, some of the, the drifting cowboys, there's a few fellows that aren't in the clip that are really close to expiring. Like some need subtitles. I mean, they're just really old. But they have these amazing memories. Uh, in, in one part of the, the documentary, they pull up an old Packard that they used to drive around in. And two of the drifting cowboys get back into it and go, wow, remember this car? You know, if you had to do it all over again, would you? Yep. And for the same pay, which they got nothing. But they humanize yeah. Hank Williams. And it becomes more than just a music documentary. It's a documentary about sadness and loss. Mm -hmm. And I challenge anyone to find a photo of Hank Williams where he looks his age. He died on January 1st, 1953 at age 29. And in all the clips, he just says, a handsome guy, but a ha handsome in almost a wasting away, like, great cheekbones. How often do you eat? Like, this, you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't look yeah. 29. He looks like a hard... 15 years older and that was and a foot in the grave you know and that was hank's story i mean he grew up in a brothel in um montgomery alabama you know so he was living far beyond his years at, at way too young an age and um you know learned how to play guitar from black street musicians right. you know which is incredible and you start to see why hank is hank you know why he did something that nobody else had ever done before you know and what what he did was write about himself. I mean, country music at that time had been very kind of hokey or writing kind of love songs, yeah. but the idea of actually writing about your own story, I mean, it's what Dylan and virtually every singer-songwriter has done ever since, but Hank was virtually the first. And by doing that, he allowed people to hear about their own lives, because everyone has lost someone, we adults, we, we love and lose. And he wrote about it while he's still married to Audrey. And, and again, the mythology idea, you know, and I always put Robert Johnson and Hank Williams together. They, they, they kind of have that high, thin voice. It sounds like it's coming, f like that wasn't recorded in the real world. That's coming from some other place. They sound like they're dead before they even made a record. They're, cause they're, so, they're so from another place anyway. And you look at the photos and you're like, that wasn't real. But you made them real. And to extend on that idea, Audrey, yeah. the wife, yeah. I can't help it. Whenever I see a photo of her, there's something in her eyes. And I'm not one of those, oh, I saw your soul. I'm, I don't do any of that. I'm just way too drab. And uh, 
but you see her and you're like, you're trouble. Look at that woman. What a, and what a hellion. And you see it in her eyes. You're like, you are nothing but trouble. I mean, he, he didn't write your cheating heart for nothing. Right. You know, so. And she's beautiful. But in the eyes, you're like, man, she could cut a man to pieces. And like she and did. She did. She did. And, and the, the way you were able to, to, to bring Hank Williams to the analog realm of humanity, I now believe he exists because of your documentary.